Hello, and welcome to the Kane Forensics video series. In this video, we will look at DD Rescue GUI, a GUI tool for drive recovery. GNU DD Rescue is a data recovery tool that will copy data from one file or block device to another. It reads the readable parts of the source first and then makes attempts to rescue unreadable or bad sectors. DD Rescue GUI is a front end to the command line only DD Rescue tool and very useful for those who are not comfortable with typing on the command line. Let's go ahead and launch DD Rescue GUI from the Kane menu under Forensics Tools Disks. By default, the program will reach out to the internet and try to find the latest version for updates, so you will see the pop ups for those. If you are doing forensics work, Best practice dictates that your examination station should not be connected to the internet, so you will get an error telling you it can't connect to the internet. The first thing I like to do is to click on the Update Disk Info button so that the program sees any media devices you just plugged in. Then I would click on the Disk Information button to see what devices are connected. From the pop-up, you want to note the device that you want to rescue and then look at the column on the left hand side that gives the device name. I have my system hard disk which is name slash dev sda. I have a USB thumb drive that's named sdb. So this is our disk that is damaged, our one gig drive. And Going over to the left hand column, we see that its name is slash dev sdc. So let's go ahead and hit OK now that we've noted two important drives. So let's click on the drop down for image source, which is our external one gig hard drive, our damage drive. Next, let's click on the recovery map file. This is an optional specification that you can make to tell the program where the map file is to be created or where the map file is located if you are restarting a rescue. It is highly recommended that you create a map file so that you have the option to restart in case the program is terminated. So let's go ahead and specify it in our staging drive. Next, let's click on the drop down for image destination and choose where you want the rescued image to go. A couple of considerations here is that the output is going to be one large file that's the same size as your damaged drive. You want to make sure that your destination drive has enough space and is also a file system that can handle a file that size. An example is that if your destination is on a FAT32 file system, it will not hold a file bigger than four gigabytes. So you will need to choose to use a NTFS or EXT file system. Now that we've selected the source and destination devices, let's configure the program by clicking on settings. The first item you will see is whether you want to use direct disk access. It is selected by default and I would leave it checked as the recovery will work better for a hard drive as opposed to a file. The second item is whether to read the disk backwards. If this is your first round of recovery, I would recommend leaving it off. If you need to do a second rescue, then I would turn on reading backwards so that it will read other parts of the drive that the first attempt may not have gotten to. Third option here is whether you want to pre-allocate space on your destination drive. The fourth checkbox will do a soft run where it will read all of the good sectors and skip the bad sectors. This will give you a read through the entire disk so you will know how much bad sectors you are dealing with. It does disable the retrying bad sector function so no bad sectors will be attempted to be rescued. The last checkbox is to overwrite the output disk and this is only useful if you are writing directly to a disk instead of an image file. Since we are going to be recovering to an image file, we are going to leave that off. Then we come to three drop down boxes that allow you to control the error recovery and granularity of your rescue process. 
The number of times to retry bad sectors vary from 0 to 5 or forever. You should make your selection depending on how much patience you have and how much you want to continue to degrade the drive if it is already got bad sectors. Number of maximum errors before exiting allows you to pick anywhere from infinite then 1000 down to 10. Set to a low number if you just want to see how many bad sectors there are and set to infinite if you want to recover as much data as you can. But once you run into thousands of bad sectors, you are probably not going to be left with anything usable. Lastly, the number of clusters to copy at a time allows you to choose between 256 all the way down to 32 clusters at a time. This basically will affect the recovery speed. The larger the cluster number, the faster the recovery, but then you'll have less granularity for errors. The default is set to 128. You will also see the three preset buttons below the line, which controls those three drop boxes. As their name implies, you can choose between the best recovery and the fastest recovery, or somewhere in the middle with the balanced. For the first pass, I would leave it as the default. Once you have selected the settings, you can go ahead and click on Save and Close. So the next thing to hit is the Start button. While the process is running, you can click on the Detailed Info and Terminal Output to expand them so you can see what's going on. The Detailed Info section gives you the amount of recovered data, unreadable data, current read rate, average read rate, number of bad sectors, where the input position is, output position is, etc. The terminal output gives you the output as if you ran the GNU DD rescue from the command line. But the information is essentially the same. Notice there are two status indicators towards the bottom of the screen. The elapsed time and the time remaining. Note that the time remaining is only a guesstimate as this number will increase as you hit more bad sectors. When the program is done, you will see a pop-up that tells you the recovery is complete and you have the option to mount your destination drive or file so you can access the data. Once you click OK on that panel, you will see the finished panel where you get a status of how much data you recovered and the location of the resulting image. Here, you have the choice of reset to run another rescue, mount image disk, to see files on the resulting image, or quit. From a forensic standpoint, the resulting image is now your best evidence, so I would treat it as such and perform a hash of it and then create an archive copy along with the hash. I would not mount the resulting image, but rather a working copy of it, as the mounting process can actually alter the image. Altering your evidence, on purpose or by mistake, is never a good idea. Let's run DD Rescue again, but this time with custom settings so that we get the program to stop because of the number of bad sectors. Let's go ahead and select the bad drive again, slash dev sdc. Then we will create a new map file, bm75309-demo, and also a new image file, bm75309-demo. For the settings, we are going to set the number of times to retry bad sectors to zero because we want this to go quite quickly. We're going to set the number of maximum errors at 10 because that's the minimum and then the cluster size to 256 because that's the biggest cluster size. So we can show you what happens with the program when it stops because it's bad sectors. Let's go ahead and start and then expand the terminal output so you can see what uh, is happening. And we're also going to expand the detail info to get the summary. And as you can see, it's going through and now it's starting to hit some uh, read errors with bad sectors. And once again, the time remaining will change depending on the number of bad sectors you run into. It's just a guesstimate. So at some point, we're going to hit a number of bad sectors that are the maximum. 
and then the program is going to give you a error panel and in this case we've reached more than 10 bad sectors so it's going to quit so let's go ahead and click ok and then what we're going to do is we're going to run it again for a second pass now we are going to uh, select the bad drive again we're going to point to the map file and destination image files that were generated from the first pass we're going to get a pop-up panel warning us that we're going to do a multi-stage recovery for settings we will just leave the default settings for this demo but you could select to read backwards and have smaller cluster sizes and so forth so let's go ahead and save the settings and then click start to go for the second pass so this time what it's doing is that it's going to look at the map file from the first pass and only look at the sectors that it could not read so the ones that we've already read it is not going to redo again so as it goes through that map file and looks at the locations that it needs to work on it's just going to go through and try to read the sectors that were unavailable in the first pass and when it's done you're going to get a pop-up panel telling us that recovery is finished so at this point you get the similar result you can reset you can mount the resulting image or you can quit we're going to go ahead and quit and the last thing it's going to do is that it's going to ask you whether you want to keep a log file so let's go ahead and hit yes to keep the log file and we're going to give it a path name and then that's it let's take a look at the map files to see what they look like so we're going to have the map file from when we did the first pass and then we're going to have the map file from when we finished doing the second pass so we look on the left hand side that's the map file generated by the first pass the first thing is that right here it says current pass is one so we know that's the first pass and then we can also see the output is basically in three columns it's going to start off with the position of the uh, read head and then the size in number of bytes that it processed and then the third column is going to be the status when you see a plus sign that means it successfully read those sectors when you see a minus sign that means those are failed reads for the bad sectors if you see a forward slash that is going to be what's called non-scraped blocks and then if you see the asterisk those are non-trimmed blocks so in the first pass we have a good number of bad sectors identified and then we also have non-scraped blocks and non-trimmed blocks those are the locations that were not read now if we look at the right hand side we see the results from the second pass and as you can see pass two basically went back and retried the non-trimmed and non-scraped blocks and make the determination whether they are actual bad sectors or if they're not bad sectors it would finish reading them so at the conclusion of this particular second pass we can see that the only things that we have left is pluses and minuses which is either a bad sector or a successful read all right so that brings us to the end of this video where we took a look at dd rescue dash gui the gui rescue tool available on the kane forensics distro hope you enjoyed it and if so click on the thumbs up icon to like this video Please hit the subscribe button to get notified when the next video comes out. Also, please leave me messages in the comment section below so I know what you liked and didn't like, or what you may want to see in future videos. See you next time.